Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Na Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Welcome this this morning for our visitors. This is Shiloh Worship Center, a place of breakthrough. I don't know what you have been waiting for, but this is the place of your breakthrough. Amen. My name is Beatrice Waithaka, and I'm born again this morning. I love the Lord so, so much as my friend and my personal savior. I want to honor the authority of this house, our Bishop Jimmy Kemani and Pastor Alice, the pastoral at Shiloh Worship Center. And you, if you didn't come, you are a very important person in this place. This morning, by the grace of God, I want to break the word of God, and I want to do the redigging the well of friendship. Redigging the well of friendship. Do you have a friend? Do you have a friend? Thank you. Then I'm talking to the right people. In our everyday lives, the lives that we are living before we go to heaven, because here we are sojourners, lest you forget. doesn't matter how beautiful the life is, how bad the life is, we are sojourners. And before we go to where we are going, friends are the people whom we spend the most time with. You live in the, in the office, you leave your house in the morning and go to the office. You are with friends and colleagues. I don't know how you relate with your colleagues, but I know you have a friend. These are people that you go through struggles with. What you are going through, you look forward to that friend so that you can share what you are going through. And who knows us best? You may tell me you have your sisters and your brothers, but believe you me, your friend knows you best than your parents. Because there are things you cannot confine to your parents or to your sisters and your brothers, but you can confine to a friend. Not friends. I said a friend. Jesus had friends. He had Peter. He had John. He had Matthew. He had Judas, Mary Magdalene, and Lazarus. They traveled with Jesus and were part of his daily ministry. And it has a compelling story to tell. If you take Lazarus aside, he has a story. Peter aside, he has a story. Mary Magdalene aside, he, she has a story. Even Judas, they all had a story. Depending, no, friendships come in different shapes and forms depending on circumstances and the character of the people involved. Some friendship lasts a lifetime. There are people who have maintained friendship for over 50 years. There are those who cannot even remember the friend they had yesterday. We are so different. Others are only temporal because of the situation that you are. You make me your friend. When the situation is over, I go with the situation. When I was all those are friends. But true friendship have only one thing in common, and this is unconditional love. That you can pay for my debts. If you are called, who can rescue Beatrice from where she is? You can say, I am ready to pay for her debt. Just what Jesus did. We were all sinners. But he came and said, I am ready to pay for their debts so that they can be my friends. A good example of this is found in the book of 1 Samuel. This is about Jonathan and David. Jonathan was the Israelite crown prince because Saul knew, after me, the next person who is going to become a king is who? My son, Jonathan. He was predestined to succeed King Saul. And David was a successful soldier in Saul's army. He had nothing else. He had no other title. He was just a soldier in the army of King Saul. And he was considered a rival of the throne. Remember, this is just a soldier. But when Saul looked at David, he saw a rival. But when Jonathan looked at David, he saw a friend. He was considered to be a rival. It would be it could have been vulnerable for these people to become enemies, David and Jonathan. But the Bible tells us that they became best friends. Look at David, his background, and look at Jonathan, his background. If today you are told by Charlene, she's, 
Her name is Charlene, a daughter to our president. That we are a best friend to. It was Charlene. Eh, ungeskia aje. Tungepita wa PCC. Tungepata maria kupita. That you are a friend to the present daughter. And imagine, Jonathan found favor before the eyes of David. And David found favor before the eyes of John. And they became friends. The unconditional love. Not because of where you are coming from. Not because of what you have. Because of the unconditional love. They loved each other and were concerned about each other's well-being. Can you imagine the well-being of David? A shepherd, background of a shepherd, and now he's, he's in the army. They were concerned about one another's well-being. When Jordan eventually died in the battlefield or on the battlefield, David mourned for his friend. And this is what touched my heart. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 26, this is what David said. Your love to me was extraordinary. Your love to me was extraordinary, surpassing the love of women. Take it from me. Take it from me. Your love to me, this was David, was extraordinary, surpassing the love of women. And you know what precious men is? Simon in English, please. The joy of every man is a woman. But David said that your love for me was extraordinary, surpassing the love of women. And that means David loved Jonathan with unconditional love. There's nothing he could have compared with his love, between his love and Jonathan. And this morning I want to ask you, do you have a friend? Somebody that you can confine to when things are elephant. Somebody you can call at midnight. This is what I'm going through. My mom used to tell me that you need a friend who can press that boil. You know a boil? You know a boil? It is a mannerless thing. It, it can attack anywhere. My mom used to tell me that you need a friend who can press that boil wherever it is. That is a friend. Are we together, friends? Two things will influence your life. The books you read and the friends you make. Only two things. The books you read and the friends you make. Therefore, choose them wisely. But by far, the most important friend that you can have is the Lord Jesus Christ. Above the books and above other friends, the most important friend you can have, friends, it is our Lord Jesus Christ. And now we go to our scripture this morning. In the book of John, chapter number 11, verse 11 to 15. John 11, 11 to 15. The Bible says, then he, this, the Lord Jesus Christ, then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. You see, he's addressing his disciples. But the, the second sentence said, but now I will go. Not we will go. Because Lazarus is a friend to many. But he singles out his friendship with Lazarus. And he said, but now I will go and wake him up. Verse 12. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. Verse 13, they thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. But Jesus meant Lazarus had died. Verse 14, so he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Verse 15, and for your sakes, for your sakes, I am glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really, really believe. Come, let's go see him. Jesus knew that if he went early, there could not be a miracle. So he tarried a bit. And he told his disciples that for your sake, Jesus' friends don't die. They only sleep. And Jesus told his disciples, our friend Lazarus is sleeping. He's not dead. They pursued until he said, yes, he's, he's dead. 
When God seems to be doing nothing, he may be doing more that could even ever imagine. And I don't know what you are going through this morning. I don't know what is dead in your life. But the Lord is doing something behind the curtain. This is a family that loved God and was loved by God. Can you imagine? The Bible says that this is a family that loved the Lord and was loved by the Lord. What an introduction. That they loved the Lord and the Lord loved them. Can it be said of us the time that you are living? He stayed with them and he enjoyed their presence. Whenever Jesus was in his way doing ministry, when he reached Bethany, he said, I can have a cup of water here or a glass of water here, a cold water here. He had a board like the Elisha, Elisha in the book of Kings that he had somewhere when he was going on with this ministry, he knew there was a notable woman of Shunem and he had a place to rest. Friends, Jesus, even today, he's walking, looking for somewhere to rest. Can he say, I have a home in your heart? Can he say, I have a home in Kenya? I have a home in Nairobi. Even today, he's still looking for a home. Mary, mother, and Lazarus had a special friendship with Jesus. One that many possibly wished they could have. The neighbors wished, I wish. Jesus ange tutembele ata sisi kwetu leo. Sada si tukona kiti mzuri kuliko akina Lazarus. Si tukona komba nu mzuri kuliko akina Lazarus. But lo and behold, Jesus had only one place that he could call a home and rest. And his presence was felt. And this is the home of Mary, mother, and Lazarus. Their friendship, just like you and I, however, could not separate tragedy reaching their home. Because you are born again, because you love the Lord Jesus Christ, because you are friends to, to, to Jesus. It doesn't matter that you are exempted from sickness or death or frustrations. No. But what remains is your friendship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because temptations will come and go. But what will remain, friends, it is your friendship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Sickness simply crept in through the night and struck Lazarus. The one and only brother. The one and only and the friend of Jesus. He must have been really sick because the, the, the sisters sent one to Jesus. And I was thinking about Lazarus and I said, maybe this man had been sick for a week, two weeks. They sought medication, but he never grew better. Instead of getting better, he grew worse until he died. And I don't know where you are this morning. You have tried every hospital in Kenya, even though you are planning to go out, 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 out of the country. But I'm going to submit to you this morning that it is a God who is able to heal that sickness. It doesn't matter the fight has gone. Jesus is saying, I am Jehovah Rapha, your healer. They sent a word to Jesus. I think they had come to their end. This month, it is one week. It is now one month. It is now six months. It is now one year. But Jesus never came. This was their desperate attempt to deal with a situation that was bigger than anything they could control. Remember this. They had the love of their, fr uh, of their brother because they had only one brother. Number two, they knew. They didn't go to a witch doctor. They knew my brother is a friend of Jesus. So what did they do? They sent for who? For the friend. Not for the physician, but for the friend. The friend of their brother. And this was Jesus Christ. What was Jesus' response to all this? Did he jump and immediately run to Bethany? Did he jump and went to Bethany? Did he speak the word and dispatch healing angels through the air? Did he send the disciples to work on his behalf? No. Jesus hung around where he was for two more days. Why? Because he already knew what the end of the issue will be. And there was purpose wrapped up in this sickness. Jesus studied until Lazarus was dead and buried. I don't know for how long they kept the, the, the corpse. But the beauty is, Jesus Tarried because he knew if I go now, they not have a testimony of the grave. He knew if I go now, wajawambaleza yakutosha. Kama nukukula hawajakula yakutosha. 
Kama ni kuchanga uchachanga ya kutosha. So he waited. He started two more days until Lazarus was dead and buried. And I was thinking this. If it was now from where I come from, if today it was me who passed on, I have relatives all over, Mombasa, Nyahururu, Nakuru, and all these people had come to bury me. And now they have buried me, and they have gone back home, depending where they came from. Even my friends in Nairobi, even my, if you are my friend in church, even you, all these people were here. They waited, and Jesus never came. When I was buried, Simudiudi Kwenyu, Every one of us is a candidate of death. Unless Jesus comes. There was a lot that was spoken by family members from near and far. And from relatives. Where is Jesus now? Oh, this was too big for him to heal. Those are the comments. Alikuwa natuambia hapa napenda Yesu. Huyo Yesu wako wapi? They went with a story. They went about to Moranga. Wakasema wame muzika. Wame zika Razaraz. Which Razaraz? Huyo rafiki, huyo alikuwa rafiki wa Yesu. But we never saw Jesus in that barrio. Relatives. Neighbors. And of course, enemies of the friendship. Because they are enemies of my friendship with you. They are enemies. They went and talked. Jesus gave them time to do what? To talk. We thought they were friends. Like the, 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 the disciples on their way to Emmaus, this is what they were saying. So you thought they were friends. Where was he? Ata siku una jinake kwa contribution. You know when you're given the book, unaangaliaga vile watu wametoa, unajua tatuwa angapi. Siku una tajinake kwa contribution. Where is he? This is what he said of you, a friend of Jesus. When you're in that hard place, when that sickness struck in your home, when that death struck in your home, this is what people say. We thought she was a friend of Jesus. We thought he was a friend of Jesus. Why? This is what people say because you as a friend of Jesus, you have an enemy. Lazarus' sickness was beyond him. This is what they were saying. That sickness, it was beyond Jesus. That's where he couldn't come because he knew he cannot heal him. Jesus gave them time to talk. Criticize for three days. Finally, Jesus came. I want to submit to you, my friend, this morning that Jesus is coming. Maybe in the first day, maybe in the second day, but in your third day, Jesus will turn up. And when he comes, believe you me, things will never be the same again. Your darkness shall be your light. Your, joy, your, your, your hurting shall be your, your joy. Because when he comes, he makes everything beautiful. When Jesus came, he told the mother, when she received him in the compound, this is what Jesus told the mother. Verse 25 and 26. Mother was very bitter because of Jesus. Where were you when my brother was unwell? Where were you when my brother died? Where were you when you were burying our brother? But Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live. We, we never die. Do you believe this mother? I'm the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in you will live even after dying. Not even after being buried. Just to die, we live. Everyone who lives in me, who believes in me, who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die. Do you believe this mother? Ask yourself this morning. Do you believe this Beatrice? Ask you, the church that you are. I know we are in different situations, as different as our names. Ask yourself. Do you believe this, Beatrice? Ask yourself. Do you believe this? Jesus wanted them to know what he could have done that day. He could 
even he could do even after being dead, buried, and even been in the grave for three days. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 13 verse 8, Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday when Lazarus was unwell. Today when he's in the grave and even forever because he's going to live. For him, for Jesus, he was asleep, not dead. Jesus wanted to grow their faith so that they don't walk by sight. As in 2 Corinthians 5 verse number 7. For we live by believing and not by seeing. All of us here, those who are born again, we believe the gospel. We accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. We have never seen him. Therefore, if you want to see, you cannot believe. You also have to believe, believe so that you can do what? So that you can see. What are you trusting God for this morning? How long have you prayed, fasted, and even given up like mother and Mary? They waited, they prayed, they did whatever they could until they gave up and took Lazarus to the grave. That was their end, nothing else. Jesus calls the things that are not as if they are because he's able to bring them into fruition. When he says, let the sick say they are healed. Let the poor say they are rich because of what I have done. Because he sees our tomorrow when we see today. The Bible says that he knows our end coming to our beginning. What are you going through this morning? And what are you trusting in the Lord? I'm going to encourage you. Don't give up. That's why Abraham had the courage to go and sacrifice Isaac. Because he knew where Isaac came, the giver of Isaac is also able to raise him again from the dead. He had no doubt to go and sacrifice his son. He knew, you give me Isaac, I'm bringing him back to you because I know even if I slain him, you can raise him up again. What are the lessons we can learn from the death of Lazarus? Number one, delay does not mean denial. Delay does not mean denial. Yes, the Lord has delayed. You say, I've been waiting for this God. Yes, my ears are running. Where are they running to? I want to get married. Nobody is coming along my way. Jesus is coming along your way. But you have Jesus above everything else because he's going to supply what you need. Delay is not a denial. God wants maximum glory out of our situation. What you are going through now, he wants maximum glory. Therefore, persevere because he's coming. And when he comes, things will take another shape. Number two, God will never go back on his word. God will never go back on his word. John 11 verse 4. The Bible says, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. What you are going through, my brother and my sister, the Lord will receive glory out of it. Therefore, persevere. Persevere because the Lord will take glory out of what you are going through. Number three, some people will be blessed by the testimony you have of the storms you endured. People will be saying, if so and so overcame, I will also overcome. There is a God in heaven that took through my brother and my sister. Therefore, what you are going through will be a testimony to many, and God will save the glory. Therefore, purpose to endure. Number four, even if your situation or your dream or your marriage or your children are seemingly dead, God can still interject a but. The word but disqualifies the former sentence. And in verse 22, John 11, 22, the Bible says, but, it begins with but. That disqualifies the 21 verses that are behind us. But even now, 
I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Even now, what are you asking? You're looking at your age and saying, now at this age, can I give birth to a baby? Yes, even now. Those who are giving birth at 15 years, even you, now God can give you a child. Even now, can I get married? Yes. Those who are getting married at 25 years, even now, God can give you a spouse. Because he's a God of now. He's a God of now. What are you trusting the Lord for? He's a God of now. The Bible says that but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Thank God for the but. B-U-T. Because it carried the day. But. Not what people are saying, but. This changes the mood of the story. And now Jesus is moving towards the miracle. He's moving towards the grave. Buana Yesu asifiwe. Number five. Nothing is too hard for God. It might be hard for you, but not too hard for God. Nothing. And I say again, nothing is too hard for God. God oftentimes waits until the situation is bigger. Yes, now I'm going to the theater. See, I'm going to go to the theater. I'm going to go to He can still come. He waits until things are bigger than human possibility before he manifests his divine power because he wants to take the glory. If he came the far, when Lazarus was unwell, many people were healed. Even the woman with the issue of blood, many people were healed. If he came when Lazarus passed on, he, there could not be a testimony because even the daughter of Jairus was resurrected in their home. But he knew the only way I can go an extra mile is to let them bury Lazarus and go back to their homes. Then I reserve it so that I can take the glory. Number six, in this world, we as friends of Jesus have a price to pay. You want to be a friend of Jesus? There is a price to pay. It is not easy, friends. Denying yourself what this flesh wants and standing out as a Christian in that workplace, in that business place, there is a price to pay. We'll have to deal with trouble and troublesome people. People that cannot be loud. But they, when they come your way, they find love in you. In the book of John 16, 33, The Bible says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you'll have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus prepared his disciples because he knew he's leaving us and leaving us in this world. And I'm going to tell people that thank God for the children of Israel because the Lord removed them from Egypt to Goshen. They had their own town. But for us, we mingle with these people where we live. In that plot, in that flood, the people were not born again. But Jesus said, I'm telling you this so that you may have peace in me, not in your people, but in me. Here on earth, you'll have many trials and sorrows. But, you see, it disqualifies the former sentence. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. And whatever you are going through, my son, my brother, the Lord overcame for you. Just stand and rejoice. Finally, number seven. Not everyone that is, that is in is of the church. Not everyone that is in is of the church. Not everyone. Many people will mingle with many people, come across many people, but not everyone. Even here in church, that is of the church. There are those who came to test the waters that this salvation will work. You are saying, now from here, I'm going to backslide because I don't think salvation works. But it, is, it works. Not everyone that is in is of the church. Religion without relationship is destructive. I know it is hard to believe that some folk will dislike you just because you are a Christian and seeking the will of the Father. Why do you hate so-and-so? She looks so fanatical. 
because you love the Lord, and they cannot understand how you love the Lord in this economy or in this era, but you have made up your mind. The cross before you, the world behind you. That alone, you attract enemies. But this is a reality of a Christian walk. You don't please everybody. Even Jesus, the Son of God, you don't please everybody. Not everybody was his friend. Because you must declare your stand and say, yes for this and no for this. Not everybody that comes on your table, you take everything. No, see, this one I don't take. Because I believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We find hope, however, in knowing that we do not walk by their feelings, rather by our faith. What do you believe? Hebrews 13, verse 5b. The Bible says, Pastor B says, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. What an assurance. If the Lord has promised, he'll never leave you or abandon you. What else are you waiting for? What else are you looking for? For friends, they cannot add value. The only person who can add value to your life is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes 3.11. The Bible says, Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. And this is where faith comes to. You only believe every day, living a day after, one day after time, because you know that there's one you are, you are looking unto. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus was a friend of sinners. But he was also a friend of sins. Therefore, this morning, if you're not born again, he's a friend of sinners. If you're born again, he's a friend of sins. And what he desires, that you may live with him in eternity. Obedience brings greater friendship with God. You want to build your, your, your friendship with Jesus? Obey what is. Those simple instructions, obey him and obey them. You get to be his friend in your obedience. If you obey him, he said, just obey me. Nothing else. There's nothing that he wants from you. Just obedience. You're walking with him in the way that he commands. He said, don't pass here, but pass here. Actually, it depends. It makes your friendship with him to go deeper. The realm of friendship is the realm of revelation. You cannot know him. You cannot grow deeper unless he reveals himself to you. Because there are so many Jesus. But as we talk about the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God said, can I hide anything from Abraham? This is from the book of Genesis 18, verse 7. Can I hide anything from Abraham? This was the time that he wanted to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But he asked himself, if Abraham is my friend, can I hide anything from him? The Bible said, should I, should I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord asked. He's asking himself, can I hide anything from Abraham? The time you got born again, my sister, my brother, there was nothing the Lord could hide from you. You could pray, you could walk, you could sleep, and then he comes and speaks to you. No, everything is meeting you at, the, uh, at your door because the friendship that you had with God no longer survives. One as if you, but he said, go back to my first love. Go back to our friendship. The things that you are seeing now could not have happened to you if at all our friendship together with you still abides. But what happened? Things came and took the place of friendship between you and God. Money came. Fame came. Things came. They, 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 you justified the flesh more than the spirit. But the Lord is saying, redig the well of friendship. Because I have a lot I want to reveal to you. The book in the book of Hosea. But the Lord will do nothing before he reveals his secrets to his servants. The book of Amos, sorry. Before he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Now there's nobody he can reveal to his secrets because friendship is no longer there. But he's saying, redig the well of friendship. 
the Lord asked, shall I keep secret from Abraham, my friend and my servant? Can the Lord address you that way? That can I hide anything from Joseph? Can I hide not anything from Mary, my friend? Before you become a servant, he wants you to become a, a friend. But you are all struggling because you want to be servants. What kind of servants? Servants don't know what, what their masters are planning. But friends know the secret places of their friends. In the book of Proverbs 18, verse number 24, the Bible says, there are many friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. A real friend. I'm not talking about brothers. Maybe you say in your family you don't have a brother. I'm talking about a friend who sticks closer, closer than a brother. In the Amplified Bible, it says this. The man of too many friends is the Amplified Version. The man of too many friends chosen indiscriminately will be broken in pieces and come to ruin. But there is a true loving friend who is reliable and sticks closer than a brother. A reliable friend. Somebody that you can call any time of the day, any time of the night. Somebody who walks with you, sleeps with you, sits with you. And this is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I sing a song and said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Because he, when looking at us, he said, we are forgotten that you have a friend. And this morning he's reminding us, what a friend we have in Jesus Christ.